Hey friends, just figured I'd do a video here on my oil fuel setup, waste oil fuel setup. Now this is the main rig that I run here, an old 12 valve, and it's mostly waste oil now. I think we're almost 100% actually, but here I'll do another quick cold start video just for the fun of it. There's my grid heater glow plug button, but we're not even going to use that now. This thing has not been run today yet. I fired it up once just for the heck of it early this morning, just for a second, but has not been warmed up. Got to give it some throttle, of course, but fire it right up. You can see there's some smoke back there, but I got to modulate the throttle a little bit. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's no grid heater, and we are probably 95% waste oil, I would guess. But anyway, so, see all that smoke? So what I started off with, actually, I'll start with that, was, you can see there's a bunch of waste oil right there. Vegetable oil is what I run, just to be clear. It's all covered in snow. We're about negative, I think we're 10, probably 10 below freezing right now, 10 degrees, maybe a little more. But yeah, it's at least 10 below freezing right now. And, uh, yeah, there is just go two goldenrod housings. So that first one's a goldenrod housing with a with an 80 mesh screen in it. I got that flipped because otherwise it would collapse when it's cold. And then just a regular old 12-volt transfer pump. You can get them on Amazon for pretty cheap or a hardware store. I think I got that from Princess Auto for 100 bucks, I think. And then a 30-micron spin-on filter and another goldenrod housing. Well, they're both water separators, of course with a 10 micron in it or whatever society you decide to run with so i used to just filter everything to 10 microns that's actually what's in the rig right now is just 10 micron oil because i only just now that tank i have over there is the first centrifuge tank i ever did all the rest is still for my old 10 micron supply and that's all i used to use i mean that whole setup transfer pump like i said 100 bucks let's say another 200 for the rest let's even say 300 for the rest so that would be $400 there. That probably includes the hardware and everything already. And that was it. I just picked up these oil, these things. So, you know, like I said, $400. You just pick up the jugs, get yourself a good source, ask around to the restaurants, or if you want to do waste oil, there's other, way, other ways to do it. But yeah, the mom and pop restaurants are typically better. Totes you can usually pick up for $100 each. So I've got my dirty tote that is literally dirty right now. As you can see, I've had a couple little messes here already. But anyway, pour it in there, let it settle as long as you can. And if you get you another transfer pump, you can even just use one of these cheap little Walbro 392 styles. They're just clones, but uh, yeah, Walbro 392 clone off Amazon. If you look up Walbro 392, it'll come up. They're like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. And they work well. But anyway, like I said, the transfer pumps on eBay, you can probably get another 12-volt transfer pump like that. The big one that I showed you there for, I would guess, probably 50 to 100 bucks on Amazon as well. And then you can transfer back and forth as you might want. But yeah, if you let it settle in your dirty tank as long as you can, and then you just filter it through that, then that's 10 microns there. Sometimes what I'll even do is I'll even just stick the hose in the top of one of those jugs there and suck it out to make it that way. That's what I put in here. Now we're fuging out of here into my main tank over there, of course. My setup is very basic. I'm very lazy. I don't have a big fancy setup. I wish I did, but I don't. If anybody has any advice for me, please feel free to share, and I'm hoping this video helps somebody as well. That's why I'm taking the time. But yeah, you wanna let it settle for as long as you can and then pump it that way of course and like i said 10 microns is all i have now this is an old 12 valve p-pump p-pumps are arguably the best ones to run some guys say the 7.3 power strokes are about as good i would recommend a lift pump for anybody that wants to do this a decent lift pump if you don't have one already a fast or an air dog system or something like that i've had my fast pump fail twice already not necessarily because of waste oil i'm not sure why but i'm starting to wonder how reliable they are but anyway you filter it that way if you don't want to spend the money for a centrifuge, like I said, if you do it like I did, just keep a bunch of extra filters on hand and you're good. Now, this here, of course, is my centrifuge. If you want to go one step further than that, yep. Apparently, I am flowing too much oil right now because it is going in there. So I think I'm going to slow it down a bit here. But what I do now is, again, we're like 10 below freezing right now. So I've got just another heating element this is a 2000 watt heating element off of amazon actually so that's it i mean that's all i use you can see it's just submerged down there and then it sucks into this hose of course that's being sucked all the way from there around to that little pump that i just showed you and from there it goes into my centrifuge now a centrifuge is a lot more money i would say do some research but this setup 
US it would probably be I would guess twenty five hundred dollars or more if you get the heater. This is a six thousand unit, so it's running six thousand RPM, so it's a two forty motor, and then you need that uh, converter box or whatever they call it. And then of course if you want the heating element, <clears throat> I've got this one turned up all the way. It's actually too cold to run up. Listen, listen for the click. There, so there you can see about what our temperature is actually being kept at. I'm not sure what that would be. I can't see it, but it's, I'm guessing it's 150 or so, maybe less. And again, I don't have any valves or nothing. All I'm doing is sucking it out of there through this little pump up into the centrifuge. And we've got a pretty good production rate here already. As you can see, almost too good, I think. Because, uh, yeah, I, uh, I've got it coming out of the overflow quite a bit now. So I think this is probably too fast. You can see my tank is almost full, actually. But what I'm going to do now, actually, I think, is unplug my heating element just to slow that flow down a bit. And that way we're not just pouring so much through here, as you can see. But if I can do it, anybody can do it. There's not much to it. Like I said, you can start off with four or $500 worth of equipment and do it for yourself down to 10 microns. There's some people that talk about one micron sock filters. You could even filter it down to 10 microns and then pour it through a one micron sock filter, you know a clean tank or whatever you use you could probably even stick the socks in there i'm not sure i've never used the sock filter so i don't know how they work but that is literally all you need like you can tell i've got a 12 volt transfer pump here and another thing i guess i should mention you can get a cheap trickle charger off of amazon this one keeps shutting off unfortunately but i think it is maintaining it even if it shows it's full but i've got just an old battery that i had kicking around if you have to go buy a battery maybe factor another 100 150 bucks for that i'd get a deep cycle like an rv battery and a trickle charger on that, it runs everything. It runs my, all my pumps, all my 12 volt pumps. And this little guy here, of course, and it works just fine. You can see I've got like four different clamps on there. <laughs> I built this little shed out of leftover wood and tin I had from doing the roof on my house and the deck and things like that. So not much to it. Like I said, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I think I've covered all the important stuff. I run vegetable oil, used to filter it down to 10 microns. That's what we're running on here. Keep a bunch of filters on hand. Now we're filtering that 10 micron oil down through a centrifuge. I did check my bowl. There's not much in there after 100 gallons, probably maybe 150 gallons. There's hardly anything in there. So I guess it was filtering fairly well through that 10 micron setup that I have, but at least now it's being fused as well. And uh, yeah, you can see sometimes there's a little bit of a drip still coming in spite of the fact that I've got it clamped shut and such. But, but it works well. And again, to sum it up, PP pumps, I run my P pumps, my 7.3s, even my 24 valves, both VP44s and common rails, even the Duramaxes, honestly. I mean, we put some in the Duramaxes as well, actually. I don't do as much in the Duramax, but again, you want to make sure it's at least 10 microns and you keep more fuel filters on hand. We don't do much in the other ones. The VP44s only get... I've done them as high as probably 70 or 80 percent and the Duramaxes I've probably done as high as 50 but yeah you want to like I said you want to filter it well and again if you just you're just starting out you just want to get into it really all you need is a good transfer pump and like I said I would get some sock filters for good measure buy you some one micron sock filters and use them doesn't have to cost much like I said 500 bucks to start I've saved in the last two years probably somewhere around five or six thousand dollars Maybe more than that, but I, I always subtract a lot of my costs and everything. So even after the centrifuge, I bet you I'm still four or five thousand dollars saved in the last two years. And this little guy's paid for, so they're a little bit expensive, but I think it's a good investment to make sure it's safer and such. But yeah, like I said, it doesn't have to cost much at all. Hopefully this video helps somebody. Again, if you have any advice, please share with me. Any ways to make my setup a little better for a lazy guy like me. And as always, may God bless you.